troops were once more honored by a visit from royalty when His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester spent three days in the field with them. The first day he spent inspecting various units of army troops. He visited a detachment of the Canadian Dental Corps and number six casualty clearing station and he praised the high standard of training and of efficiency which he found. On the second day His Royal Highness saw a display by the 3rd Army Tank Brigade, while the 18th Armored Car Regiment also staged a demonstration of armor in the attack. The Duke then saw the 4th Divisional RCASC and was impressed with the speed and smartness of the men who get the supplies forward. With Major General Worthington, the distinguished visitor inspected a guard of honor from the 28th Canadian Armored Regiment. His Royal Highness then saw an assault demonstration by the 11th Infantry Brigade, supported by tanks. Tank obstacles were bridged, and infantry, engineers, carriers, and tanks swept forward to the attack. One of the last events of the tour was a formal inspection of the Royal Winnipeg Rifles, who gave their royal visitor a real send-off. The Royal Engineers and the Royal Canadian Engineers trained together at the famous British School of Military Engineering. Mine laying and lifting is one of the many tricky jobs learned from men who know the enemy's tricks. The prefabricated bridge building technique, using standard bits and pieces assembled and bolted together, uh, reminds you of the days when you played with Erector and Meccano sets and built your own private bridges. But this simple yet speedy method of bridging is a specialist job, and the men of the Royal Canadian Engineers learn to be specialists from specialists. There's a right way and a wrong way to do everything, and the right way is demonstrated and explained by a British instructor whose advice will come in mighty handy for the day of the big push. And when the Royal Canadian Engineers get their teeth into the enemy, the Nazis will find that their bridge work is pretty solid. the 14th Field Ambulance of the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps had marched past Brigadier E.A. McCusker, who was accompanied also by Lieutenant Colonel Matron-in-Chief A.C. Neal. They demonstrated a kind of Moses in the bulrushes technique of getting casualties across the water. First, a small boat was improvised with a stretcher and tarpaulin to get a man with a rope across the river. Then, Larger craft were likewise improvised for carrying the casualties themselves. So if you stop one, the field ambulance will get you out come hell or high water, and the handling you will get will be by hands practiced in making do. Improvisation works over land as well as water, and with the same ingenuity that made those boats, Casualties are hoisted up on a double-deck version of that angular little maid of all work, the ubiquitous Jeep. Straight from wrestling with parade states and typing out part two orders, this squad of Canadian Army clerks are plunging into a period of battle drill training on an assault course. That shows that though the pen may be mightier than the sword, it does not count for much in front of a Bren gun or hand grenade. Yes, this is tough going if you've been an orderly room clerk battling with nothing tougher than central registry, but these chairboard infantrymen have got what it takes.
and it all goes to show that in the Canadian Army there are no non-combatants. So next time you have an argument with the orderly room, don't forget they may be able to back up their point of view with something more dangerous than a mimeograph. Recently married were Ross Monroe, the Canadian press war correspondent, and nursing sister Helen Stevens of Number One General Hospital. Ross has written more about the Canadian Army than probably any other war correspondent. And now, he really has got something to write home about. The scattered units of the Lauren Scots gathered again this year when, after a tough period of training as a unit, they paraded to hold their annual sports. Among the many events was the three-mile race, won by Corporal J.W. Collier with Private R.B. Harley coming second. No sports day is complete without a tug of war, when everyone pulls his weight and the biggest and fattest are anchor men at the end. Nor is it complete without the high jump, featuring in this case CQMS Zipier, Private VJ Smith, and Private W. Cream. Altogether, a good time was had by all the Lauren Scots. But this good time in the old swimming hole was enjoyed by men of the Queen's Own Camerons in an impromptu sports day. And some remarkable diving was to be seen, featuring a double super jackknife bottom beater. <laughs> What did you say, Sergeant Major? Sure, come on in, the water's fine. <laughs> Canadian-built rams of the Three Rivers and Calgary Tank Regiments board their LCTs in preparation for another big landing exercise. Final waterproofing is completed to protect crews and engines so that as the craft approach the enemy coast, and the ramps go down, the tanks can practically tackle a submarine. The chief danger seems to be jellyfish getting caught in the works. Waterproofing being deliberately blown clear of the tank, leaving it ready for immediate action. And when Canadian armor goes into action as the spearhead of the attack we've waited for for so long, there'll be few problems which haven't been studied ahead, and no obstacles that won't be beaten with the help of Providence, Canadian ingenuity, and good shooting. <laughs> 